Welcome to Baraton TV, here and hereafter. It's our pleasure once again to bring you an interview with one great personality, a daughter of the continent of Africa, mm -hmm. successful in many ways, and a Christian in every sense of the word. And we want mm -hmm. to thank you for accepting to come to our show today. Thank you so much, Pastor. I am happy to see you. I'm happy to be here. It's been ages. It has. <laughs> and now our viewer is wondering, who could this be? <laughs> and since I don't want to say it in my own words, <laughs> tell this viewer your name. All right. My name, hello everybody. My name is uh, Advocate Nyarazo Gilbertina Maposa. Well, this is a daughter of Africa from which country? <laughs> from Zimbabwe, the great land of Zimbabwe. This is South Rhodesia in history. <laughs> yes, <laughs> South Rhodesia, absolutely. Yes. Where were you born in Zimbabwe? East, west, north, south? Definitely in the south. In the south. So I was born in the south of South Rhodesia. Okay. okay <laughs> yes, okay. Um, it's a province called Mashingo. Right, and um, it's a large province, and uh, it's down south, just next to South Africa, actually. Next to South Africa. Mm -hmm. So the closest city here is Bulawayo. No, no, mm. the closest city is Mashingo. So you have the Mashingo city Mashingo in city. the Mashingo uh, province. So you are a city girl. In a sense. So you were brought up in the city, rural area. Tell us about uh, your life, uh, where it began in Mashingo. Okay, mm. so um, I was born. Two months after my dad died. Yeah, so no, thank you. So my, my father was a lay pastor and he was a principal at a Hanke Mission, which is uh, one of the uh, pioneer missions in Zimbabwe, SDA missions. So I think every principal became a lay pastor automatically. So um, unfortunately, my dad died at a young age and I was a pregnancy. So my mother was uh, seven months pregnant with me. She had six other children, wow. the oldest of whom was 10. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I can imagine the line up. Oh, yes. She <laughs> yeah. had a little crash there, you know, yeah. uh, preschool. So um, my mom was a teacher by profession. Okay. And I think after noticing that she had to go it alone mm -hmm. um, as a parent, she decided to change uh, uh, careers. Okay. But changing careers meant that she had to take at least four years mm -hmm. uh, to go and study. Okay. So uh, all of us essentially were kind of dispersed. Uh, the older ones went to boarding school. Mm -hmm. uh, the younger ones uh, went to the farm to be with my grandfather. Okay. And then I, because I was really young, I wasn't a year yet. So yes. she was with me for a bit. She took me to her, it, well, in school. But now she couldn't stay with me forever. So yes. she, 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 she sent me off to my aunt, her older sister. Okay. And that's when I was introduced to the rural areas. Uh -huh. Right. So yes. I essentially grew up my, the first five years of my life in the rural areas. No running water, no electricity, no yes. English. No English. No other language but your native my goodness. <laughs> language. So yes. Why did you catch up with English? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So... Um, after I was uh, five, I think at six years, my mom then took everyone because she was done. And mm -hmm. now she had a job and she had a house. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I say house, mm -hmm. I mean one room. Okay. I mean, it was self-contained in every way. It's everything. <laughs> it's everything. It's the sitting room, it's the bedroom, it's the kitchen. Everything, yes. Wow. So, um, so I went there. Um, so she st first started in one room and then she applied for two rooms. Mm -hmm. She got two rooms. She then applied for three rooms. Mm -hmm and right up to four rooms. So I joined the family at three rooms. Wow. Right. Yeah. <laughs> now, now th 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 there's a viewer who is watching us mm -hmm. who for some reason could have lost a husband. Mm, 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 All mm. is not lost. Yep. Because there is a mother who raised, how many children? Seven children. Seven children. Yeah. <laughs> with no husband. Oh, yeah. It's possible even for you by the grace of God. It totally is. And she was young. She was 29 when she was widowed. 29. Yeah. She was 29 when she was widowed with seven. Somebody needs to be encouraged. Amen. Amen. My mom is just the most amazing person because mm -hmm. she managed to put everybody through school. 
you know. And she made a sacrifice. It's not an easy sacrifice. But I think she noticed that with seven children, you know, it might be much to be looking for a husband. So mm. she decided that she was not going to get married. Not to say you can't get married, no, but you she, can get married. you can get married. Yes. But she decided, no, let me concentrate on uh, these, my children. And it's also possible that there's somebody living in one room with so many children. It's true. Or somebody in a home where they, all they have is one room. Yeah. Still Absolutely. the best can come out of there. Absolutely. And this totally. is the right example from one room. <laughs> right here she is. Excellent. And I'm sure now you must be having so many rooms and even to spare. I have a few rooms. <laughs> <laughs> I have a few rooms, so yes. So when you joined the house, three rooms, mm -hmm. tell us about your schooling. Okay, so I started going to crash, which was uh, like preschool, mm -hmm. which was uh, just a local preschool, mm -hmm. right? And my mom, my mom had joined the social service, mm -hmm. so she was working in, in, in um, association with the United Nations, okay. and uh, so she was working there, and yeah, all of us were going to school. But she was determined, you know, back then it was important, it was prestigious if mm -hmm. you sent your children to boarding school. You know, it mm. wasn't just uh, an ordinary school. So mm. she sent um, she sent us all, uh, or those who chose to go, to uh, the, you know just the the we used to have A schools and B schools and mm. private schools. So she sent us to the A school, which wow. was the main school in mm. in the province, and um, so it was excellent. And she then you know she kept on educating herself she didn't stop there mm -hmm. i mean when i checked unfortunately my mom passed away this year so oh, we're so going so through all her stuff mm. and i found not less than 13 different certificates and diplomas wow. and what which she had achieved during her life 13 yes a single she, mother, a single mother, seven children, yeah, thirteen certificates, thirteen certificates. And somebody whining there with <laughs> just one child. I mean, you yeah. need to get a life. Oh, yeah. mean, we need to, to 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 learn from these things. Can you imagine mm. thirteen certificates? Which how many do you have? Anyway, you, 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 you keep telling. Us. Okay, thank yeah. you. So then, because she she kept on buttressing her qualifications and yes. her position. Yes. When she applied um, to the mine, you know, mm. she then applied to uh, this asbestos mine, the main, I think it's the largest asbestos mine in Africa, actually, mm -hmm. uh, called Shaban and Mashaba Mines. Mm. And um, she got the job. Okay. She had no competition, really, you know, and she was telling us the stories of how she went for the interview and yes. everything. And when she got to the mine, she was the first uh, African woman to drive a car. Wow. You know, it, yeah. it really, this, this is in the early 80s right or mid 80s rather driving. and she was driving and women were not really empowered no. at that time compared to this not time. at all no 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 and uh so we moved from a four-roomed house mm -hmm. to a four-bedroomed house wow. on a two-acre stand mm -hmm. with a swimming pool you hey. know it was the most amazing and surrounded by white people you know what i mean when i say now we're neighbors of white people yes. <laughs> And it, it was, was this was now, yes. And we started going to now multicultural now, schools. Now I understand your test for good things <laughs> in life. <laughs> true, true, yes, true. Yes. But you know, that's when um, I suppose, so I, I'm very grateful that I spent the first uh, about eight years of my life mm -hmm. um, very much closely associated with the rural areas. Okay. And that means that my Shona, which is our native language, yes uh is very very um, how can i put it i'm very well versed in our shona culture and our african culture not from learning from books yes. but i lived there you experienced i experienced it, it so mm -hmm. i knew all the names of the trees mm -hmm. all the creepy crawlies the names of the birds in shona and you can preach in shona oh yes I'm grateful for that. And because of that, yes. uh, I went to, to a multiracial school afterwards. Uh -huh. And of course, they went and tried to delete everything that I knew of what. But uh, <clears throat> when I then studied my advanced level, mm -hmm. uh, I chose languages. Uh -huh. So I actually studied Shona as a language. Uh -huh. I studied English as a language. Wow. And then I had to choose a third subject and I took geography. Right. And that was out of interest because those things were natural to me. Uh -huh. So Shona wasn't hard for me. I didn't want to work too hard. You know, during, <laughs> <laughs> during A-level, I could have done sciences. I had passed sciences. Yes. But I said, no, you know, let me do something. So it would allow me to do many other things because I was, I was, I was a, a multitasker. So I didn't want school to take too much of my time. And, and, and there goes an idea for career counseling mm -hmm. that somebody mm -hmm. must do something they are comfortable with. Yes. 
that and comes naturally. The idea of forcing children with no mathematical background into <laughs> mathematics. Yeah. And one week in school looks like three months. I, and it's a pain. It's a pain. Yeah, it I is hope a some pain. some parent is listening there who is telling, my son, you must do this. My daughter, you must do this. No, yeah. it doesn't work that way. Yeah. Let the child, you know, train up a child. Ah, in the way. In the way. He should that go. God had already designed. For yes, the precisely. So Shona was your thing. So Shona was English my. It was came. Easy, it was my thing because then I went to a multiracial school, mm -hmm. and we're being taught by English people. Mm -hmm. So you can't learn better English than from the English. There you go. So that came naturally to me, and you know when I did my ordinary level, mm -hmm. which is my GCE, mm -hmm. I wrote eleven subjects. Wow. And I passed all of them, mm -hmm. many of them with A's. So I could have chosen sciences. We, we have not asked about the other grades, but we took note that many were A's. Yes. yes. <laughs> so I could have done sciences, mm -hmm. but like I'm saying, I, I you know, I, I and, and, and sciences were prestigious. Yes. If you did sciences, there was a certain respect that came to you. It still is. Uh, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I remember doing a bit of a research to say, okay, if I do arts, and I don't pass well enough to go and do, because the, the most uh, maybe prestigious degree that you could do with arts was law. Mm -hmm. But you know, you can study and you can do the best you can. And sometimes you just might not get, make it, yeah. make it to where they want. It was mm -hmm. very bottleneck. Mm -hmm. So they wanted about 62 students only from the whole country. Wow. So it was a possibility that you might get in, you might not get in. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> I did a bit of a research. I said, okay, so if I don't get into law, mm -hmm. What will be my plan B? Uh -huh. and, Wisdom. Oh, yes. <laughs> we need a plan B. Absolutely. Yes. I said, what will be my plan B? And my plan B was I would do medicine in the United States. Okay. So they would allow you, if you passed very well your ordinary level, and remember I had sciences and mm -hmm. I had A's, mm -hmm. um, so I could have gone to the United States, do done medicine. a bridging cross and, and a course, and then do medicine. So I, I didn't have to study sciences in order to be able to do medicine should I need to. But I needed to do arts in order to do law mm -hmm. if I needed to. I guess you got the law. This is I advocate. got the law. <laughs> <laughs> so plan, plan A is what worked. Yes. So, you know, I uh, worked uh, really hard and maybe I can just say this to students who are studying. Mm. I had uh, different plans for each subject. Uh, mm. I won't take too long on this. Mm. But uh, for English, mm -hmm. you know, let me start with geography. For geography, it didn't come to me naturally. It was something that I had to learn. Mm. So I decided, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to get all the past exam papers from 1980 yes. to the current year. Yes. Uh, June and November exams. Yes. I asked my mom for a plan book. I said, can you buy me, you know, those thick yes. uh, uh, writing books. Yes. I said, please buy me about two or three plan books. And I started on the front. I did human and social geography on the back. I did physical geography. Mm -hmm. And I started writing all the questions. Yes. And I started putting all the answers. If I didn't know the answer, I went to my teacher. Wow. Help me with this. Mm -hmm. And by the time I got to the exams, mm -hmm. There was no question they could ask me that you couldn't answer. that I had that I didn't know already and wow. that I had not researched on already. And, and you know what we call that? For mm -hmm. Some people they may not know what we call it. We call it hard work. <laughs> and <laughs> focus. The, the yeah. I mean, when somebody gets all the past papers yeah. and is writing them, yeah. you know the process of writing I, internalized. It's, it's then true. you get the answers. That's yes. hard work. Yeah, it's hard work. And it's a plan. Yeah, it's a plan. It's also a plan. And there's somebody and who's just pr praying to fly to the top. <laughs> there are no elevators. That is true. No, no, no. Not to the top. You have to climb your way. You, you have to get dirty. You take the stairs. Oh, yeah. You took the stairs. Yeah, uh, absolutely. My goodness. And, so you uh, ended in law school? Ended up in law school, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, law school took four years. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a time for political reasons that they closed, they shut down the university, mm -hmm. the University of Zimbabwe. Yes. And I remember thinking, uh, why sit we here and die? Mm. When there could be food. When I could be going somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So I determined to go to the United States. Okay. Now my mom, through her studies and everything, she had also gone to the United States and okay. she had made some Adventist friends. Okay. And so I got in touch with them and said, they've closed university indefinitely. Mm. I want to come. Mm. But I had no 
visa. Mm. I had no money for at all ticket. for air ticket, mm. you know. So I started working for that. Mm. And, uh, you know, I got assisted by the Institute of Migration. They yeah. organized uh, an exchange program for me. Okay. Uh, and um, then I started going to every relative that I remember, mm -hmm. saying, please, can I have $300? Can I have $200? Yeah. And then I was able to go there, and that became a wonderful, wonderful exposure for me. You know, so I was there um, throughout the time that university was closed. Okay. Eventually, they opened it uh, after everything, after some, after the unrest was gone, mm -hmm. and then I came and finished my, my law degree. Okay. Mm -hmm. After that? After that, I um, went home mm -hmm. to, um, to my mom mm -hmm. and uh, I found that my grandfather was not well. Okay. He, was, uh, he had uh, cancer of the esophagus mm. and he needed some home, home nursing. Mm. And, uh, you know, we, we couldn't afford to get a, a home nurse. So I decided to take time off to look after him. Wow. And to, wow. you know, so wow. I gave about a year doing that taking care of grandfather. taking care of my grandfather wow. <laughs> yes May until hallelujah yeah. so until he passed away when he passed away as the lord would have it a month later i got a job wow Mm, wow. In Harare. In Harare, the <laughs> city of Zimbabwe. Yes, uh, so that was exciting. And I started working, and uh, I, I'm glad it was an Adventist um, person who was running that firm. Okay, it was a law firm. It was a law firm. Okay. And uh, he had his, his, his wife had just gone overseas to do a, a, dig, a, a, a master's, so he needed someone to mm. go to court and to do running around. Mm -hmm. So I learned, I think, six, I got six years' experience in that two years. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and um, so I had applied for a job in, an, in, a, in the firm where I am at now. Mm -hmm. And just at the right, right time, they uh, called me to say, can you please join us? Wow. And I remember there were 13 lawyers mm. and I was the only lady. Wow. Yeah. And uh, I've been there. Now I have been with uh, Soya and Kushi for 20 years. 20 years, of, 20 legal years practice. of legal practice in that one firm. Yes. And I have been a partner for 15 years. Wow. Yeah, with that firm. But altogether, as a lawyer, I've been a lawyer for 22 years. 22 years. Yes. Wow. Uh -huh. Now tell us about your Christian life. What, are, you, are you a Christian in the first place? <laughs> you just <laughs> said it right at the beginning of the interview. <laughs> now, now confirm it. <laughs> Oh, I am a hundred percent Christian. Yes. But I must say, and I always say this, mm. I grew up in the church naturally because, okay. you know, like I said, my dad was um, a lay pastor, yeah, mm -hmm. and um, and my mom was not always Adventist. Mm -hmm. She was from the Dutch Reformed Church. Okay. But when she married my dad, she actually converted, not because of my dad, mm -hmm. but my dad had, you know, had been teaching her, mm -hmm. right, a lot. And she decided she wanted to be Adventist. So even though my dad passed away, she remained Adventist and she was determined to raise us in the Adventist church, in mm -hmm. the Adventist faith, mm -hmm. even for the sake of my dad. Yes. So, um, so we grew up and uh, obviously, I mean, I've been joining singing groups and uh, everything, went through the youth phase. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was always confused. You know, I, I, I had two people in the Bible that I admired a lot mm -hmm. and I could not understand how they did what they did. Mm -hmm. And that was Joseph, the first one. Uh -huh. You know, I, yes. I'd want to meet Joseph in heaven. Yes. You know, he's my guy. I also have some one or two things I need you. to clarify from him. <laughs> <laughs> Precisely. Yeah. And for me, it was like, uh, how does a person, because for me, Christianity had been presented to me as something you do uh, for the sake of the, the you know, the, 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 the people who are surrounding you. Mm -hmm. So you just did what you did mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, for, 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 you know, to, in order to look clean, yes. if you get what I mean. Yes. So you spent your life hiding little things, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, you, and as long as the church members don't know, mm. or your friends don't know, your parents don't know, everything is fine. Mm -hmm. And I think that's somehow how the youths live, uh -huh. you know. Uh -huh. And so that's sort of like how, how you're living your life. And I didn't understand how Joseph could move away from his family and, and still be righteous. Yeah. I could not understand that. Yeah. I said, no, I, I don't get it. Yeah. So uh, he was a challenge to me. You know, I said, I would, you said there, were the, two. there were two. The second one mm. was Elisha. Uh -huh. 
I, you know, there was Elisha and his servant Gehazi, uh -huh. and they were surrounded by an army. Uh -huh, I remember. And um, Gehazi could not, he was shaking, he couldn't understand mm -hmm. how come Elisha was so calm. He's just calm. And all Elisha said was, Lord, open his eyes. Clearly, his eyes were open. Yes. So I wanted yes. to understand what that meant, you know, how these, come his eyes, eyes were just... that can see. That can see what everybody else uh -huh. cannot see. Uh -huh. So he's my other guy to say, I want to get to a point where I'm with God, but I know. Mm. Everybody else may be confused, but and but everyone, you see but I see, see what people don't see. N now I want and that. <laughs> now I want that. Amen. You yeah. know, and he just said, "Open his eyes, let him see mm -hmm. what 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 we can see." Uh -huh. So I said, "I want I want that kind of faith." You Amen. know. Amen. So anyway, um, ultimately, I suppose for me, my conversion mm. then came. Um, when I had already started working. Okay. I was already working, uh -huh. you know. And uh, as a... This time with Mkushi Soya or... At that time I was already now with Mkushi. Yeah. And I remember just... Uh, <clears throat> I was dating a certain gentleman who was not... Who was neither Adventist nor Christian. Mm -hmm. Now understand that, okay. And... Is, uh, is irreligious or indifferent to religion? Uh, you know, really pretty much indifferent. Okay. Just living life. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I could date such a person now when I'm looking back, mm -hmm. it was telling me that I was at exactly the same level as he was. Yeah. Only, Can two walk on, together? On, only that you had covered it up with a little Yes, with a little Christianity, uh -huh. you see. So it's, that's how you understand to say, oh. Are, are, you, are you telling this viewer <laughs> that whoever you date is you? Absolutely. That's what you're telling this viewer? Oh, absolutely. Because so if we see the one you are dating, yeah. there you go. That, because that is what is attracting you. Uh -huh. And how are you getting along? Can two walk together except they be agreed? So if you're dating a person who drinks... Mm -hmm. You really drink. You are just not drinking. It's only that you haven't started. It's just you haven't started. Given opportunity and proper you circumstances, you'll be in it. Absolutely, totally. And uh, but for me now, mm -hmm. what my mother always told me was uh, because my dad died. My dad died. He knew he was going to die. Mm -hmm. You know, he he had had several operations, and when he went for his final one, he was sure he was not going to make it. So mm -hmm. he actually. Uh, you know, he gave put his, his house. He in put order. his house in order, mm. and my mom uh, told me that because he 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 blessed his children, mm. but she says that he because he didn't see me because mm. I was a pregnancy. Yes. he placed his hands on her womb mm. and said, "I am blessing this one, and I'm giving this one my name." Now, my my dad's name was Gilbert. Yes, <clears throat> and he said, "If it's a boy." then it will be Gilbert Jr. Yes. If it's a girl, it will be Gilbertina. And Gilbertina is my second name. Wow. Right. Wow. Wow. So my dad said, I am giving my blessing to this one that I have not seen because mm -hmm. she has not seen me. I have not held her in my hands. Yes. So, you know, throughout my life, there was always that nagging feeling to say, I want more. Mm -hmm. I want to be a Christian beyond what I was seeing. Uh -huh. You see, people were happy to be Christians at church, mm -hmm. but they were not Christians outside of church. Uh -huh. And I could see behaviors. You wanted authentic. I wanted authenticity. Yes. I wanted practical Christianity, uh -huh. where I'm a Christian when I wake up and I'm a Christian when I go to bed. Mm -hmm. And it has nothing to do with anyone. Mm -hmm. It's just me and God. Where I can say, yes, I know that I can be with you in this way, Potiphar's uh, wife, mm -hmm. but and nobody's watching because you've sent everyone away. And you remain faithful. But God is watching me. So I wanted to get the, to that point mm -hmm. where I said, but God is watching me, mm -hmm. you know, and just having living in the presence of God. So, you know, as a young person, sometimes you get tempted by this, you get tempted by that. But even as I was dating this uh, young man, mm -hmm. I knew for a fact that this was not the path I wanted to take. Mm -hmm. And uh, at some point... So you are dating a person, <coughs> but you know this is not the person I should be dating. I, I had temporary intentions towards him. <laughs> <laughs> but he wanted to marry, you understand? He, he had wanted to marry. Intentions. He had permanent intentions. Yes. And so I, I kept on praying and asking the Lord, you know. And um, I remember going to the U.S. I went to the U.S. often to, you know, this, 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 this family then adopted me. Mm -hmm. So I had to go there every so often for family functions and mm -hmm. everything. So um, they're called the Millers. Yes. Yeah. So, so I just gone there. And when I was there, I was determined to break it off with this gentleman. Mm. Right. And I prayed. Mm -hmm. And I asked my older sister from that family to pray I with pray. me and everything. So 
when I came back, mm. you won't believe it. Mm. And I believe this was part of God's uh, part of God's answer to my to my to my prayer because it was hard for me to break up with this young man. Mm. It was next to impossible. What was making it hard? He would drop everything, you know. He was also, by the way, not just that he was not a Christian. He was also a chronic philanderer. Mm -hmm. And I, I was not happy with that about it, you know. He, was a, <laughs> he, he had made a lot of money. He's not much older than me, a year or so older than me. Mm. But he had made so much money and, you know, with more money, more eyes, you mm. name it. So, and more investments. And more investments. Yes. Social investments. <laughs> <And pretty, laughs> <laughs> Precisely. Yeah. So, you know, um, I remember mm. praying to say, Lord, give me the strength to leave this man. Mm. But I think God knew that it was hard for me to leave him, mm. particularly because we were being promiscuous. And when a woman is being promiscuous with a man, it's hard to, to come out of it. It's just hard. Now you know why you <laughs> haven't left that character who is giving you a headache. <laughs> you are suffering. You yeah. still suffer tomorrow. <laughs> promiscuous going nowhere yeah. <laughs> but there's a hint here i know you are getting it pray you prayed right. i prayed so you came back from and u.s yeah, after prayer i came back from the u.s after prayer mm. and lo and behold mm. uh, i discovered that he had made a new investment mm -hmm. and that gave me the courage to break up with him you used this as a reason it the as basis. a reason yes yeah but now um lo and behold mm -hmm. About a few months after mm -hmm. I had broken up with him, yes. I then discovered that I was expecting. Mm. Ah, same it gets guy exciting. Or... Same guy. Oh, okay. oh, no, same guy. I thought this was American. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I was yes. faithful in my, uh, yes. yeah. So... But now you have, you have broken up, <clears throat> but now you yeah. discover mm -hmm. there is something that will keep you connected with yes, him yes so um what a, a a girl in that situation would naturally think mm. maybe not so naturally but what people would encourage you in a difficult situation like that is to say get rid of the pregnancy and mm. you get rid of the mm. program but no mm. you know no mm. that's not how i was raised mm -hmm. there's no way somebody's listening here uh, you, you know what because i mean those, yeah those are the points people reach quite regularly oh absolutely yes. and yes. i said no no way mm. would i ever take a life you know, it's this a question was of abortion. Uh, yeah, absolutely, and yes. And you had to deal with it. And you had to deal with you it. You don't like I... the man? <laughs> no, I'm not planning on being with him ever again. <laughs> and and here is the pregnancy. And here is the pregnancy. And now, and you have so many advisors who are telling you this can be done in an it easy way. It can be. You can sort it out. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I had had friends in high school who had mm. had abortions. Mm -hmm. In uh, sorry, not in high school, in college. Yes. And I remember they knew my stand about it. Mm. I was not happy with it. I did mm. not encourage it. Mm. And in fact, most of them, I left them. Mm -hmm. I said, that's not the way to do things. So uh, it, was not a, it was not a decision for me. It was mm. never a choice for me. Okay. So of course I kept uh, um, my pregnancy. And, but now I knew that if I told this man about it, he would, uh, you know, he would, he would uh, relaunch his yes. proposal he had already yeah. proposed because now he would have a basis yes yeah. he had already proposed twice i was not sure i had rejected it but now he had a reason yeah and for sure when i told him he went down on his knee again he said will, will you, you marry, marry me, me? <laughs> <laughs> and i remember it was not easy you yeah. know um because you're confused it's the first time it's happening mm. and uh you also need advice from your parents from mm -hmm. from the church even yes. you yes. know and um <clears throat> And I remember the, 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 the one voice which was uh, uh, in unison mm. was you have to get married. Wow. You have no choice. You just have to get married to him. He's there. He's rich. He loves you. Mm -hmm. You've dated him for that long. Mm -hmm. It is his pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Are you crazy? But what made the difference for me yes. is that because I'd gone to the U.S. and I was praying, to get to that level of Christianity. Yes. It wasn't just about marrying a person yeah. and a situation that was there. Mm -hmm. It was the future. It was that blessing that my dad had given uh -huh. me and the future of what I was hoping mm -hmm. to be a walk with God. Mm -hmm. I did not have a ministry then. I did not have a ministry, mm -hmm. but it's just, I knew inside my heart that I had to be more. Mm 
Mm -hmm. There was something bigger mm -hmm. and better. Mm -hmm. And so the decision to marry this guy went beyond social embarrassment. So it's not just what people are looking at. No. You are not trying to cover any shame. No. No, and, no, and no, you know, no, no. There are people who may make a bad decision to cover mm. shame. Yeah. And pregnancy is nice nine months. Oh, yeah. But mm -hmm. marriage is a lifetime. It is. You can't cover nine months using a lifetime. Are you okay? <laughs> you cover nine months using a lifetime? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, so that's that's yeah the so, child came <clears throat> so you know it was during that time that i think yeah about three months is when i actually discovered that i was expecting mm. and um it was exactly at the same time that i had actually made a choice for my conversion uh -huh. and i always call it my conversion remember i was always adventist yes but i had to be a christian mm -hmm. i then realized that i was just a a a, a, a what do I, a committed churchgoer nominal yeah mm. and I was baptized mm -hmm. didn't make much of a difference mm. um, so I needed to be a Christian so I then spoke to God mm -hmm. and I'm glad that God allowed me to have that pregnancy because he knew that without the pregnancy I would not have the strength to leave this man isn't that uh -huh. isn't that ironic Wow! wow. now because I was expecting a child and uh, I then at that time read a book called uh, Dare to Live Now, something like that. Yes. And it said that the Bible says train up a child in the way he should go. Mm -hmm. But we should understand. And even when he's old, he will not depart from it. Yes. Um, uh, Proverbs 22, 6. But how you should understand it is train up a child in the way he should go. But first you walk in it. Yeah, you must walk in that way. You walk in the path yes. that you want to train your you child set the to walk in. Yes. yes. So I started asking myself, if I have this child, it means this child's chance for heaven will be entirely in my hands because this man does not go to church. Yes. You know? So the, the, the future of this child, the future of this of child future is in your is hands. Is in me. Mm -hmm. And if I am not a true Christian, mm. if I'm still not sure about where I am, this child's blood is going to be on my hands. On your head, yeah. And it was because of this child mm. that I decided to fully now convert. Total conversion. But the pressure was there now mm. from uh, the powers that be to mm. say, well, you can get disfellowshipped if you don't get married. Mm -hmm. But if you get married, it will just be a censure. Mm. You understand? I can see. <laughs> the church fathers. Yes. <laughs> and I remember just being strong enough to say, you know what? Mm. Why don't you take the extreme? Mm. Take the extreme as if I'm not going to get married. This Maybe, fellowship. Yeah, just mm. go ahead and do whatever you have to do because mm. I am not in a place where I can decide for marriage mm. right now. They say, but what's wrong with you? You're an African girl mm. and you're pregnant and a man wants to marry you and you don't want to get married. Are you crazy? <laughs> they didn't know you are not just an African girl. You are yeah. a Christian. Hallelujah. And you know, that's when I was praying to God and I said, God, I want to have a covenant with you. Uh -huh. I want to have a covenant with you. Mm -hmm. And in that covenant, I want you to cover my baby as well, who is still in me. Uh -huh. When you cover me with your blood, so cover a covenant, her. Yes. You and your baby. And my baby. Yes. So I say, cover, cover us. Mm. And uh, I want to walk with you. And I am committing to you today mm -hmm. that I shall be chaste. Mm. And the next man I'm going to be with mm. is going to be my husband. Mm -hmm. And I don't care when that is going to be. It's going to For be 10 now, years, it can 20 be 10 years, 20 years. years I okay. don't care yes. as long as he's from you. Mm. Because in the meantime, don't give me a husband now. Mm. I am a mess. Mm -hmm. Spiritually, sexually, emotionally, everything. In, I'm a uh, mess. You, you are not okay. I need you to fix me up. Mm. And when I'm ready, Mm. Uh, when I can be a blessing mm. to a man, yes. then feel free to give me someone. Wow. And, uh, and I said, I'm giving you my chastity, but you need to give me that promise. Wow. So we started, you know, I went for about six months, mm -hmm. what I call in seclusion. Yes. Not complete seclusion, mm. but it was me not watching TV. Yes. Me not even listening to radio. Mm. Me not... Uh, hanging out with people, just me and my Bible and my God. Wow. And I said, now teach me. 
You know, and you know that that seclusion reminds me of 40 days, 40 nights of yes, Jesus. Yes, absolutely. It reminds me of three years of Paul in Arabia. Yes. There's some need for seclusion. There to... is. Just to get, it reminds me of Handel, mm -hmm. of Handel's Messiah. Yes. He went away, I think, for 13 weeks and he produced that amazing Something piece of music. Something always comes out of seclusion. Absolutely. Even because... Gautama Buddha of Buddhism. Yes. He was in seclusion. He was. Then Buddhism came out. Absolutely. So mm. I did have that uh, kind of seclusion for about six months, right up to the time that I gave birth. I think the next time I watched TV is when people were coming to give presents and they said, why don't you turn on the TV? I said, oh, TV. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so but, this um, seclusion, there was no TV? No TV, mm -hmm. no radio, mm -hmm. no visitors back and forth. Mm -hmm. No, uh, maybe just here and there. You know, you are there alone trying to reorganize your life, trying to sort myself out, trying to understand what God wanted for me. Wow. And I remember I prayed, I think, eight times a day, wow. you know, so I woke up at 3 a.m. I prayed at 6 a.m. I mm -hmm. prayed when I got to work at eight. I prayed mm. at lunchtime. I prayed mm. around three o'clock. I prayed mm. around five o'clock. I hey. prayed when I got home. I prayed when I was going to bed. I prayed. And this, so there was this, no time this, for anyone. This does not include prayers for food. Uh, no. <laughs> no, it no, doesn't okay. include prayers for food. <laughs> so I prayed eight times every day. Wow. So I was, you know, um, it, my whole life was about God. And um, what then happened was, I remember mm -hmm. all this time, this young man was still trying to persuade me to mm -hmm. marry him. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I got to a point where... I think his friends were now telling him, mm -hmm. it's not making sense. This has never happened. Mm. How come you want to marry a woman who is pregnant, but she's refusing you? Mm. Maybe she knows that this pregnancy is not yours. <laughs> you know That's the advice convincing. that comes. Yes. Yeah, he was convincing himself. You know? So one day he decided, no, I'm no longer coming to you. He'd come pick me up from home, drop me off at work, mm. pick me up and, and drop me back home. Mm. Right. And uh, so he just decided one day, I'm not taking you home. I will not show up. So, you know, for me, it's significant because that's sort of when I hit rock bottom. My mom was insisting that I get married. My sisters were insisting I get married. Society was saying get married. Mm. Uh, you know, church was saying get married. Mm -hmm. uh, I, was, I was on my own. And uh, at that time, the only consolation was that this man was still interested. He was still a choice. Mm -hmm. I could still go and say, OK, yes. let's get married. <laughs> yes. But now so, the consolation but is But now gone. when he just said, uh -uh, that's it, no more. You must now face <clears throat> the reality. The reality. So yes. I remember hiring a cab and I remember traveling home. And um, while I was in there, you know, I carried my Bible everywhere. Mm. I, I was crying. Mm. And I remember calling out to God because I had said, I want to have a covenant with you. You know, mm. I want to walk with you. But I hadn't, I'd never spoken to God, you see. I didn't know how he talks to mm -hmm. people. I had no mm -hmm. clue. Mm -hmm. uh, but I wanted that, mm -hmm. you know. <clears throat> and uh, I remember asking him, are you in the business of making covenants with people mm -hmm. these days, mm -hmm. you know. And I cried and I said, Lord, <clears throat> how come you haven't said anything? Mm -hmm. You're You've just quiet. quiet. Yeah, you're not you know? talking. I'm now on seven months mm. and... Nothing. Mm. You know, you haven't said anything to me. And I then said, I'm going to open my Bible mm. and I'm going to get to a chapter. The first full chapter I find on whatever page I open, you, you had better say something to me. Yes. And that's when I opened and um, I opened to Isaiah chapter 40. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it said, comfort ye, my comfort people. ye my people. Now yeah. understand something. About 10 years after that, Pastor Randy's kid visited Zimbabwe yes. and I was attending and he said something very peculiar. He said, whenever God wants to emphasize something, he says it twice. He repeats it. Yes. yes. Mm. So he was saying, Abraham, Abraham, you know, mm. uh, verily, verily, etc. Mm. So when he said, comfort ye, comfort ye. Yes. It was only with the benefit of hindsight that I looked at it again to say, God said, comfort ye, comfort, comfort ye, ye twice. Yes. And what's interesting, in our Shona language and yes. in our Shona Bible, yes. when you go to that verse, yes. it says, Nyaradzai, Nyaradzai. And that's my that's full name. name. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Is that not wow, so? I was wow. like, wow. He was speaking so to you. So he actually called me. Yeah, he called by you By name twice. and he called twice. 
And he, Martha, Martha. But, uh, yes, Saul, Martha, Saul. Samuel, Samuel. And I tell you, <clears throat> at that time it was about comfort because I was crying. Mm -hmm. And he says, speak ye comfortably unto Jerusalem mm. uh, that her warfare is accomplished wow. and that her iniquity has been pardoned. For she has received of the Lord's hand double for her transgression. Now I knew that the one thing that I'd received mm. for my transgression was the pregnancy and whatever embarrassment came with it. The second one I didn't know at mm. that time. Yes. Right. But God said, I punished you twice yes. for your transgression. For your transgression, yes. But now the voice that is coming from the wilderness, you have asked for the Lord to come into, the, into your life. Now prepare ye the way of the wow. Lord. Wow, wow. And this is me confirming my covenant with you, that now, every valley shall be exalted. Uh -huh. Every mountain and hill shall be made shall low. Be made low. Mm. All the rough places shall, shall be, be made, made plain. Yes. And all the crooked shall be made straight. Yes. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. Hallelujah. And all eyes shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Hey, dear viewer, God does speak. Hallelujah. She challenged God and God spoke. I think, uh, Advocate, we mm -hmm. will have to come back again. Let's give our viewers a break. We sure. are coming back. We will need to listen to more of this story. But mm. if you have one parting shot for this moment, what would you mm. tell this viewer? What I would say um, to the viewers is that you need to get to a point where you are acquainted with God. Mm -hmm. He's not some form of imagination that we have in our heads or it's not someone we talk about mm. but it's not real in our lives mm -hmm. the minute you involve him in your life or you invite him into your life he will come wow thank you so much this mm. is baraton tv here and here after bringing you interviews that change life thank you so much advocate for showing up the lord bless thank you, you so in much, a big doctor. way thank you so much doctor. thank you so much Amen. god bless you here and here after